Well, hello everyone. This is Matthew the Goblin Piper. I'm coming from the not so dank and dirty shed. Um, I know I might have said in the past video that it was the dank and dusty, but it's really not. Um, it's actually a really well made shed um, made in the 1930s um, along with the house. Uh, Though it is not well insulated, that's something I'm working on, but I do have my little heater going off to the side here, and it's only 36 degrees out there right now, Fahrenheit, so it's not too bad. Um, I can usually smoke comfortably out here most of the year. Um, on the rare occasion, it gets below zero Fahrenheit. Um, I smoke inside. I'm allowed. It's okay. Um, but it suits my purposes most of the year. Anyways, um, I, I have something to share with you guys today. Um, I look tired. Do I look tired? I am tired. It's late. Um, it's been a Monday. Um, I know most of you can probably relate, but I had, I had something to share with you that I just couldn't put off. Um, so... I haven't really talked about my uh, my journey as a pipe smoker. Um, I would say when we bought this house back in 2015, I uh, caught a wild hair and decided that I wanted to uh, smoke a pipe. And I, I really don't know what the initial, um, the initial catalyst was. I mean, for all I know... It was Lord of the Rings, because let me tell you what, everybody, I am a nerd. I admit it, I'm a nerd, proud of it, uh, not going to shy away from it. Um, but I will tell you that that initial uh, pipe smoking experience, it's not so great. Though... Uh, even though my first pipe purchase was this Medico pipe, which I've caught or I've kept for posterity, uh, made of unknown material, uh, not a great material, I'll tell you that, because um, it smoked hot. I probably did nothing uh, for the. A pipe tobacco that I initially smoked and uh, it might excite and also anger or pain some of you that first tobacco that I smoked was frog Morton cellar by McClelland and I'll tell you what I hated it <laughs> I really did I hated it um, and I'm sure though I haven't had it since I will say that it's probably from user error because as some of us know um, I've been smoking for some time now it uh, you really need to start out with not necessarily an expensive pipe um, but something of quality material I mean even if you are smoking something like even if you start out with something like a cob which I have a myriad of uh versions um, uh, sizes and shapes gosh i really need to get some kind of mount for this thing i'll do that i promise i will um but like i said i started out with this guy um frog martin cellar um back before i knew the importance of such a fine tobacco though i really don't know if it was a fine tobacco i'll just have to uh trust in the experts uh because to me it was hot um, burnt the crap out of my tongue, and um, it was weird. It was weird because to pipe to pipe tobacco was a really weird thing. If you really think about it, um, for those of you that have come from either um, um, cigarettes or um, in the states. American snuff, um, which to the are my European listeners, it's not snuff. 
Um, it's more of the American version of snus is packed and put in the lip. The process of um, pasteurization is different. Um, and it's much more like chewing tobacco and the fact that it uh, produces spit. Um, which that's not what this video is, but I kind of want to kind of uh, show where I'm coming from. Um, because when I was of the age of 18, of course, I gravitated towards cigarettes because that was probably um, the most common form of tobacco, tobacco consumption where I come from. Um, and then second would be American Snuff, but that was something that I wasn't really interested in. I tried it once upon a time as uh, a high schooler, whether I should have or not. Uh, that's not important. Um, which made me sick. Um, which now I feel differently about, but I might get to that later. Um, so anyways, you know, my, uh, there was a hiatus between that initial, uh, experiment, um, with, um, pipe smoking and there might've been a year or two in between. Um, yeah, because we bought this house and this is, you know, I base everything in the past 20 years on a few milestones in my life. Um, the year I graduated from high school, the year I got married, the year I graduated from college, and then the uh, year of my daughter's birth. Um, because I'm getting to the point where I'm really not that old. But I'll be honest with you, I thought I was... 34 for the past two years and it turns out that I just turned 34 but anyways that's not important that's 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 my own issue and something completely different uh but um I would say probably four years ago I decided I would give it another crack and unfortunately I discovered YouTube the YTPC um um famous people such as um Bradley from Stuff and Things um uh, Mutt Chop Piper, of course, and um, Bruno, the magnificent Bruno with the beard. I can't remember the name of his channel because I really haven't seen anything from him lately, um, and I didn't check before I made this video. But you know, you most of you probably know who I'm talking about. Um, but they really kind of helped me understand um, the nuances of pipe smoking and what really was a good basis for um, starting that. Um, your adventure into pipe smoking because you could take the most elegant, most prestigious, the most exceptional of pipe tobacco and put it in something that um, will not allow you to experience the wonders of pipe smoking. And not only for multiple reasons. And that's the whole problem, isn't it, with pipe smoking? Because you could start with something that's of exceptional quality um, for a specific taste in pipe smoking. And then you'd go ahead and you put it in something that's unexceptional in the case of the vehicle in which you smoke it. So like I took, you know, something that a lot of people consider, um, something that they, they loved. Um, they constantly are searching for the alternative to when it comes to M McClelland. And I know that, um, Frogmorton Cellar was something that people still pine over. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have any of that to um, appreciate it now, later, but you could put that in something like this without knowing, you know, the proper way to pack, the proper way to light, and cadence. Because something that I've discovered is that cadence is probably mo the most important thing when it comes to pipe smoking. Because it's not like sucking on a cigarette um, it's not something that you can just put in your lip and uh, forget about um, and, 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 and enjoy the same constant characteristics um, from the leaf. Um, so, carrying on, I, um, I, I ventured into um, um, look, getting my first briar, and unfortunately I don't have my first briar right here. Uh, I don't even remember what the brand was, but it was just your basic um, um, Bent Dublin Billiard. Um, and the first thing I smoked in it, 
that second first smoke. And that's kind of where I consider my, my initial, um, um, foray into pipe smoking because that's kind of where it caught, you know, where it catch, where I kind of, it kind of clicked. Um, and I really appreciated what it had to offer. Um, because in that billiard, I smoked um, Orlick Golden Sliced, which is just a fantastic Virginia. Um, and I smoked the heck out of that. I just had that one pipe, um, that, that, that one tobacco, and I just smoked it until all of it was gone. Um, and then once I got to that point, I kind of was looking around, you know, I'm like, you know, it'd be nice to have a a couple more pipes so that you know um i could let that cobs or my, my billiard set so i got some cobs and you know i have i have cobbett of the shire i have the general i have the country gentleman i have the mark twain you know and i even got some of those special edition fourth of july ones that they came out with three years ago um and they're great cobs are great they really are but there's something that I noticed um, between that billiard that I had, that that first, you know, genuine briar that I had, and um, my my cobs is that I was a, I was slightly ashamed to smoke my cobs out in public. Now, smoking cigarettes in public around here is. Most people don't do it, to be honest with you. That's something that people do in their cars. They do that in their homes. They do, they do that somewhere where the people around you aren't aware that you're smoking. Um, and I think that's that has something to do... There's, there's probably multifold, but the, 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 the main reason is that because um, cigarette smoking has become such a taboo subject in our, in our culture, which... Somebody who has smoked cigarettes in the past, I I would have to agree with. Just because I... There's a difference to me between appreciating tobacco um, and inhaling it in my lungs. Because I've smoked, I've done, trust me, I've done all all the forms of tobacco, tobacco you could do. Um, initially I did, um, chewing tobacco. I did cigarettes. I did American snuff. I've done snooze. I've done nasal snuff. I've done vape and I've done pipe tobacco. And, um, I'll tell you what, bar none, pipe smoking is by far my favorite, but there's still something about a guy walking down the street with something hanging out of his mouth pouring smoke that is really something that really sticks out around here um and it also happens to be quite a, a very conservative um area we do have a lot of um lds uh, in this this part of the country um and some of you on the east coast might be going what is that well it's it's the mormons the church of latter-day christ um and they're they're definitely more prevalent out here because we're we're neighbors to Utah, which is kind of the the home country. Anyways, that might play a part in it. But regardless, it's not something that um, somebody would be used to seeing because it's it's just something that would stand out. And me personally, I don't like to stand out. Um, I've always appreciated the ability to blend in with my surroundings for no particular reason. Except for, uh, I think it makes it more interesting to observe those because they're not observing you. Uh, which, it is what it is. But, um, at this point in time, uh, I don't care. Because I have fallen in love with pipe smoking in the last couple of years. Um, because then I, you know, I went to the one, the only, um, cigar and tobacco shop within, I would say a hundred miles of where I live that actually sells tobacco pipes and tobacco and pipe tobacco. And while I was there, I got a couple of some of those rebranded lane limited tobaccos and my lovely Rossi Victoria, which this is a great pipe. 
it's real light clench is nice because i'm a clencher this is how i like to smoke because there's nothing better than smoking while you're out walking around i like a good lunt um and like i i i showed in my last video um it's a perfect place to do it because not only do we have a walking path around the perimeter of our our plant but we also have a private road uh, just inside that perimeter um, that when I'm out doing my my rounds in the morning, in the afternoon, there's nothing wrong with bringing out the pipe and having a good having a good uh, chooch. Uh, it, it's probably a good mile and a half around, and, you know, if I haven't finished a bowl, I go around one more time, and it really doesn't matter because I'm still doing my job, and I'm still enjoying, enjoying the walk around. Um, and then... Um, once I, after probably, I probably smoked uh, my cobs and um, that Rossi for about six months. And then I got my first Rattray pipe, you know, which is very affordable, beautiful briar with stain, you know, it's a pretty classy look. It's got a decent sized bowl. It's got that bent stem, which I appreciate. This is the Raven, by the way which I love. I like to smoke um, the Englishes that I do like. Uh, I don't know if I talked about that yet, but anyways, the, the Englishes I do like uh, are Presbyterian and White Knight. As of now, um, those are the ones I've discovered. Um, they work really well in that pipe. Um, but uh, I also have, you know, I have my Nordian Compass. Um, I've ever actually got this really nice straight thick walled um shotgun poker from professor walker um just recently i haven't smoked it yet because i have been saving it to smoke some vapors in because i did purchase some vapors which I already had some and i've experimented with them before um but i haven't really got around to it yet so i'm, I'm saving it i'm looking forward to it um but i uh um, I smoke a lot of aromatics. Um, I find myself in, in the evening, I'll, I'll have a pipe and I'll experiment. I'll try different blends all the time. Um, I haven't talked about much of them, um, on this channel yet, just because I've gotten started, but, um, I've, I've tried quite a few. Um, I do plan on, um, having a handful of bowls of the hearth and home. Naughty Pine, that's part of their Slow Age series. Um, a few people have asked what I thought about it, and I haven't cracked it yet, but I will, because it's cold, and uh, I feel like a little bit of a, a little bit of Latakia, um, which doesn't happen very often. Because I'll tell you what, though we are in the high desert here in Idaho, um, it's hot, probably between june and end of september um so i find myself smoking a lot of light aromatics and um virginia straight or or vapors or vapors um because i do love uh burley it brings a lot to the table uh, a lot of it rounds out it was a good smoke um it adds a lot of characteristics it's mellow it's it's mellow um most of the time um and of course, you know, I, you guys know, I, I'm a fool for the Eddie G. Um, but anyways, um, I wanted to share with you guys a new pipe that I bought. Um, I had a whole spiel of, oh, you know, the journey and, uh, the history. Um, but I'm just going to get down to it because... Uh, I bought my first Peterson and I'm super excited about it. I've been looking forward to it. It's not an expensive pipe. Um, I've looked at other Petersons that are more expensive and I've added them to my list, but you know, I decided, you know, I love a straight pipe. Um, I love, I love the look of a bulldog, especially on the shank where it's got that diamond shape. Um, it's to me, that's just a classic look. Right. And of course I'm a clencher, right? So I'm going to clench. I need something that's going to be really easy to clench. Um, a fishtail 
I think would be um, perfect for that. Um, this is also a really lightweight pipe. Um, and uh, without further ado, here it is. Look at that lovely girl. It's got that classic Peterson P on it. And of course, when I opened the box, you know, I touched it. I touched the four corners. They're all sharp. It's immaculate. It's a very Irish green. It's got em raised embossed lettering across the top. If you open it up, you see this lovely pipe sock. It's l lovely Irish green. And I'm like, dang, this is going to be good, right? And it is going to be good. Because look at that. Look at this pipe. It's got a great, good-sized bowl, really. Relatively thick-walled. You know, it's got that pre-carbonized, whatever you want to call it, um, bowl in there. Um, it's a 9 millimeter, so of course it explains the extra thickness on this shank here and this bit. Um, lovely fishtail bit. Um, and I'm looking at it, and ooing, and I'm awing about it. You know, I'm like, can't wait to smoke this. I'm going to smoke the heck out of it, too. But there's a couple things. There's a couple things that left me feeling less than great about it. Now, maybe you guys can console me and tell me it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it, bro. It's fine. You're the only one that's going to notice. It doesn't matter. There's just a couple things. It's a lovely pipe. Lovely pipe. Perfect shaped. It's everything that I want. And a bulldog, it's lovely, it's fantastic. But if you turn it around here, you see that now. If this was completely natural and it didn't have any of that extra stain in it, no problem. And I know you can't see that, but this is the plate in which they they print Peterson of Dublin filter, made in Ireland. 150. Now, 150 is the model number, I'm assuming. Um, but the only thing that irritates me, okay, one of two things that irritates me is the fact that you can see that there's this extra bit of stain that wasn't it wasn't sounded down quite enough. It was pretty pretty deep right here. It looks like somebody took a sharpie and just squiggled a bunch of hieroglyphics on it. Kind of ugly, but then also on over here on this side too and i know you probably can't see it yeah you can see it right there you see that on that chromed band there there's a couple of spots that got a little too close to that polishing wheel you know it's right there right there by that peterson peak what well, well it's upside down for one but either way you know on one side you've got that less than perfect chrome band and then you turn it over here, and where that magnificent Peterson P is, you've got that bit right there. I would have really liked if that had been completely done away with the stain on that piece. I would have been completely fine with that. You know, I know you need a place to stamp the model number, you know, your, your mark, all of that. That's fine. That bit doesn't bother me. Uh, I just wish it had been a little bit more... I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I just wanted it to be... I wanted it to be more. And I have a whole reason for wanting it to be more. I mean, first of all, this is my first Peterson. Only paid 90 US for it, so... Can I complain that much? I mean... Maybe? Um, but, regardless... I love it. I mean, <laughs> it's great. I mean, look at this thing. Oh, gosh. I mean, it's a classic shape. It's got this really craggy finish, which I really like. You know, if I can't have a smooth finish with immaculate uh, flame grain or bird's eye, I want something that I can feel in my hand. You know, this is something that and it's light as heck, too. Um, I'll have to look up the exact weight of it. Uh, but that's an easy clincher right there. I mean, something that I clench 
all the time. Did they bring it out here? Oh, yeah. So, my Rattrays, the good deal. This is my, this is my favorite pipe right now. Easy clinch. I can, I can do whatever I need to do with my hands out here in the shop. Either I'm doing woodwork or if I'm at work, uh, my paid work, um, I can, I can, I can just lunt. I can walk. I can do whatever I need to do. Hands free. Um, it's a great pipe, which again, nine millimeter. Um, now I do have a question for some of you guys. I do have some of these, and this is maybe a silly question, but I do have, I do have some cobs like this that I have that bent Danish stem on. Now, can you guys tell me, and I, and if you can't answer, that's fine. I'll have to go back and see. I think I got these from Aristocob. I think. Now, these are not nine millimeter, but are the, will these accept a six millimeter charcoal filter? Because I'll tell you what, there's a big difference to me between the balsam six millimeter filters and the nine millimeter um, charcoal filters. Um, so, yeah, if you guys know the answer to that question, I think I know the answer, but I'd like your guys' input. Um, thanks for joining me here tonight. Um, I just needed to share this beautiful pipe with you. I mean, it's not perfect, and I'm okay with that. Um, I still like Peterson. I think they, you know, the tradition, the quality, um, and most importantly... To us here in the States, the accessibility um, is fantastic. And I have no qualms of spending my hard-earned money on it. And I will be more than happy to do it again. And I will spend more if required. Um, I do have some tobaccos uh, that I also got in that shipment that I'd like to share with you guys. Because um, I do seem to be on an OTC tear. I've got a, I've got a good handful of those uh, I want to show you guys and maybe do a review on i don't know you know when it comes to reviews i'm really not sure um I'm not it's kind of like wine i really don't know i don't really don't know what the individual flavors are at this point but i'll tell you if i like it because there's some that i do and there's some that i don't and i'll tell you one way or the other and you'll have to take it with a grain of salt uh but anyways until next time guys good night and um, we'll see you next time.